It's midnight in London. COVID has taken over the world and life is still. The neighborhood is silent. Excited screams ring out, laughter and talking. Angry voices can be heard, people banging on doors, shouting, keep it down. Is there a rave going on? A party filled with drugs and music? No, it's one 16 year old playing video games with his friends across the city while his parents tell him to shut up. That was me. And today I'll share with you the joys of video games and how they kept me sane during the lows of lockdown. It was not uncommon during the first lockdown for me to be in my room for nearly six hours a day playing video games. And as much as this can be far too long to spend, it made the first lockdown much more bearable. As having finished my GCSEs, lockdown kind of felt like I was floating in empty space. There was no work to complete, there was nothing to do, and I couldn't see my friends as we weren't allowed to socialise with people. But for me, the antidote to all of this was gaming. Not only did it give me something to do all day, but it was meaningful. I wasn't spending six hours staring soullessly into a screen. I was spending six hours laughing, bonding, and thoroughly enjoying the time spent with my friends. But if I'm going to talk about the positive parts of video games, we can't escape the negative side. I know there is a downside to them, and gaming can have definite impact on people's lives. One of the most unfortunate side effects of gaming is what the World Health Organization calls a gaming disorder. This disorder is something you can be diagnosed with when you have impaired control over playing video games to the extent that they take precedence over your entire life. While playing video games, your body releases dopamine, which is part of what makes them so enjoyable. This constant dopamine release and then constant enjoyment that comes from it is what triggers the gaming disorder. But this is not the whole story. Despite these negatives, for some who overuse gaming, there is another side to them, which is largely positive. One of the biggest benefits of gaming in lockdown was that I was constantly keeping up to date with my friends. And you could say anyone could have done this by simply FaceTiming, calling, or texting them. But the reason gaming was so much more beneficial was that it allowed for active interactions and friendships instead of passive ones. Passive interactions are those that only really involve talking and don't allow you to truly connect or bond with someone where active friendships are well active. They involve you working on a project with someone, solving problems together, or jointly killing some zombies. These active interactions were vital for me for keeping my sanity during lockdown, especially when we couldn't leave our homes. It is often viewed that the friendships formed online are not the same and not as viable as those formed in real life. However, how close you are with someone is based on the emotional connection that you form with them. And it's my experience that this emotional connection is just as deep online in the virtual world as it is in the real world. This constant social interaction that comes from gaming also leads to people having higher levels of social identity. This was discovered by Dr. Rachel Cowart as well as other researchers from the University of York. And they also found that this confident social identity directly correlated with having higher levels of self-esteem and lower levels of loneliness. Throughout playing video games, I also noticed that my ability to work in a team was greatly improved, especially in working on school group projects, but also any time I need to communicate with my peers. And after some research, I found that teamwork skills are increased by utilising the social skills that gaming provides, especially in games that mimic common team structures, where individuals each play a unique role in achieving a common goal. In one game, that's a great example of this, two teams of five challenge each other. Each player chooses a different character with different strengths and weaknesses, and it is up to each team to take on the other team by using their strengths and communicating and therefore win the game, primarily by finding the best way to brutally shoot and kill all of your enemies. <laughs> These teamwork skills formed are beneficial not only in school, but also a skill many workplaces seek to see how well you'll fit into their business. Adding to these teamwork skills, Another aspect I find especially important to recognise is the improvement of eyesight. In recent years, doctors have been given children with amblyopia, also known as lazy eye, Nintendo DS's to play on. This is because when their good eye is covered, their bad eye is forced to be used to play the game, helping prime the visual pathways of the cortex, the part of the brain that allows us to see. This in turn helps these children with amblyopia see better and use their bad eye. But gaming can do more for just eyesight than amblyopia. It also helps improve your visual contrast sensitivity, which allows you to better differentiate between subtle shades. I've only touched the surface on the benefits of video games. There are countless other aspects I haven't mentioned. For example, your ability to multitask, your dexterity, 
your reaction speed and spatial awareness, the last of which are great indicators of driving ability. But by far the most important aspect of gaming is the joy that comes from them. The hours of laughter and smiling is what makes them most worth your time. No one should spend their whole life playing video games. They'll be boring and very pale. But it is clear that gaming can lead to true and long-lasting relationships. Thank you.